So, you know, you've done a lot of interesting things already through your career, and, and obviously Shadows is huge. But if someone has never seen anything you've done before, what do you actually want them watching first and why? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I try to, like, pride myself in doing different roles that are different from each other. Um, it's something to start off with would probably – I mean, shadows you can't go wrong with, you know. Uh, for animation, obviously, uh, Puss in Boots would be great because those are two different characters. Uh, yeah, it depends. It depends what your demo is. Are you into comedy? Are you into more of a drama? Are you into more animation? So it would depend. But I would definitely have a good menu for you. And we have a starter, a main course, and a dessert. <laughs> when they contacted you about the Puss in Boots sequel, was it sort of like, did you even ask what the character was? Were you like, wait, you want me to voice a character in the Puss in Boots sequel? Where do I sign? Well, no, it was, they asked me to audition first. It wasn't an offer, and they asked me, would you like to audition? And I, and I thought that exactly. It was like, you want me to audition? It would be an honor, you know? So the audition alone, I thought, you know, I'm not going to get it. You know, you always think, don't, you know, you hope for the best, but you just do your best work and put it forward, but never uh, have this, like, you know, entitlement of, like, it's mine. And so I auditioned, hoping for the best, and then they said they wanted to do another Zoom with the director and everyone. I was like, okay. And then they told me I got it. And I just remember thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm – what? Like, this is happening? And even then, I still didn't believe it through the recording session, because you never know, because Hollywood's so fickle, something could change automatically. So it wasn't until really recently that I was like, I'm in this movie. I am in it, right? Like, I'm doing it. And you have a big part. <laughs> I have a big part, yeah. Uh, so so it's great. If, if I'm being honest, um, I, I didn't know what I was expecting with the Puss in Boots sequel, but it's real good like way better than I expected. And like, I'm recommending it to everyone. What was your reaction watching the finished film and seeing the animation and the story and seeing it all come together? I mean, I, I think it's fantastic. I just, I didn't expect the animation to be so, you know, advanced. I was expecting, you know, because we're so used to animation, what it's been for the last decade. Uh, but this new version of what we're going towards in the future was just mind blowing. I just remember seeing it and I, I knew what the script was because we had recorded it and, and could only imagine what it would be. And I know what Puss looks like and I know what, you know, uh, Kitty Softpaws looks like, but to put them all together in this this world and the adventure they go on, just like the smallest detail of twinkling blue lights in the dark forest that just like are mesmerizing. It's a haunted, you know, scary forest they're going into, but yet it looks so beautiful that you're like, I, you know what, I, I take the risk. <laughs> I go in there. It's just beautiful. It's it, it, it was stunning. What do you actually think would surprise people to learn about the recording process that maybe they don't realize? Well, it, it, it seems people think, oh, you went in there, and you did it in one day, you know, and it's just like it's done. And it's like, no, it's a process. Like you go in and you figure out who the voice is and you discover it and then you get directed. Our director was amazing. And, and the the way the film came out, it looks like we were all in the same room performing in front of each other. And in reality, we we're all in different time zones, different, you know, countries even, because we all live around the world and working around the world, that it was the director who kind of railed that in to make it look so cohesive and linear to the story that it looks like, yeah, we went on this adventure all together in the same room. Uh, and it's it's hard work. It's a lot of hard work for, for animation. People don't know that. Well, the other thing, I've spoken to a lot of people that do voiceover and uh, they, dr they love doing it. They dread the efforts where you have to record the grunts and the whatever those kinds of sounds are. So did you have to do a lot of efforts? And what are your thoughts on those? I did, especially when he's trying to mimic the, you know, the, the look for the the cats when he's like being adorable and cute, and he can't do it quite yet because he's already an octave higher than my voice. So the straining had to go even higher than that. So it was like the I remember doing that scene. I think we have footage of it where it's just me doing and going. Mm -hmm and just going reaching for and reaching for and that was just really like every ounce of my body just engaged uh it's a lot of work it's a lot it's a workout <laughs> yeah i i uh i think people don't realize when you leave that uh, the voiceover room your voice is like don't talk ever again yeah i'm taking a vocal rest yeah exactly that you go home you sleep like a baby and you feel it because it's the only muscle that you were really kind of just completely working out that day uh full out and the, the only instrument you can rely on to tell the story as opposed to your whole body when did you actually realize uh what we do in the shadows was like taking off if you know what i mean 
I really didn't know what we were doing, um, you know, with the fans and whatnot. I knew that we had fans who adored us and did fan work, and it was amazing. We have to remember that we shot season uh, three and four during a pandemic. And so season one was like a, a critical darling that everyone knew about. And if you were knew about it, you were in the know. And so it was like you were cool to know about it because it was like an independent thing. And then season two got more accolade and more attention. And by season three and four, we shot those uh, seasons under a pandemic. So we don't really get to go out and about. And it's not until recently that like walking down the street, you know, went out to dinner in New York last night, we're walking out the door, and this girl stops in her tracks and says, excuse me, and then it's like, you forget that people recognize you because of this program, uh, because we lived in a bubble for the last, you know, hibernation of like two and a half years. So it's now only now that we're coming out of that bubble, and it's like, you're living your regular life that you lived, you know, beforehand, but you forget, oh, that's right, people are gonna recognize you because they watch the show. So that's when I start realizing when more and more people stop you on the street. <laughs> So I'm really looking forward to the Blue Beetle movie, which I know you have a role in. What That's was right. your reaction? Because originally it was going to go HBO Max, and now it's going in theaters. So what was your reaction when you heard, hey, this movie's going into theaters? I think it, it deserves to be in theaters. I think that is the best choice. Um, the script is amazing. Uh, Anke, the director, has such a vision for it. And I'm so proud to be a part of it. It's an all Latino cast, and it's never been done. And uh, the first you know, Latino superhero, uh, that's Blue Beetle himself, is just going to be you know, mind-breaking. It's going to be revolutionize the way that kids are going to see themselves represented on television, on screen, uh, you know, in film, it, and in the time has come that we need to like show kids that they are valued, they are included in the table, and they are welcome to be part of this field. So I'm really excited to be a part of that. Have to ask you, uh, who do you play in the film? What can you tease about uh, your role? Uh, well, they haven't announced who I played in the film, and I can't announce it yet. Uh, but I will tell you that it is a crucial person to the overall story. <laughs> That's a very good politician answer. And I just say thank you so much. I'm so happy for your success. Thank you uh, and have a fantastic day. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone at Collider.